Yeah. yeah. Sounds good in the headphones rooms. Shout out my daughter Lyric in the building. Hello, Lyric. <laughs> the mic. Okay, so we've been through all kinds of like revolutions as far as retail goes, right? Like first, oh the vinyl's not worth anything, then the vinyl is worth something again, and you know. Uh, the CDs aren't worth anything, and then, you know, I sold it, my last album, I sold out, I can't even keep up with the CDs, so we're back to wanting something tangible to go with our music, right? Um, which leads to where I think we are today in a trajectory, and I think it's so ill because I think all of us, um, Monch had a comic book out not too long ago, I think all of us kind of understood that even independent of each other. This wasn't like we were on the phone with each other. You know, it was kind of like a natural synergistic uh, moment where everything came to where, you know, people were like, they, you know, we need to do something to go along with the music because essentially, you know, not to get too deep into it, but our culture is being robbed of its sales. And there's no kind of like, we have no idea where the sales are going. They tell us something and we're just supposed to tacitly accept it, right? And so I think us as independent artists on this stage are tapped into an actual cult fan base. I hate to call it that, but just since it's been called that historically, where we have direct to the consumer where people are like, okay, so if there's no major push with this as far as uh, corporations go, I'm gonna support my artist directly so he can keep making this art that I love because we out my support. We, they really can't exist and you know, I'd like to thank anybody in this audience personally who's ever bought anything for every, any of these artists on the panel or myself because it's, it really gets to be critical. Also, I'll say for myself personally, being that I am an artist from the early 90s, we're not gonna talk about how early. Um, I have a body of work that people actually want to add to, you know, having it collectible wise. So, the comic book. So um, I used to always call myself uh, the Puerto Rican superhero since I first came out or whatever, just kind of feeling like, you know, keeping myself in shape. And my man, what up, what up? Um, and, and so it's kind of like a natural progression. Like I would get fan art of people drawing me in all kinds of things like that. And my homeboy Gift about 11 years ago was like, we should do a comic book, a graphic novel. So we started one and it wasn't quite it. We started another one and it wasn't quite it and then we finally found what we felt was the perfect union. Um, I had some, a musical piece that I did with Adrian Young and we took, we started to develop a storyline and it kind of, the first one came out and it was really received overwhelmingly uh, positive. I had no idea that people would, you know, because it, it, it is, we are merging it thanks to people like Destroy, but it is a separate, a uh, fan base, you know, like for instance, my first, we're up to the, the third book. My first book uh, just went like crazy, like okay, because they thought it was gonna be like a Chino Excel boutique uh, you know, the nigga wants to see himself in a comic book type of thing. So by the second one, people were like, so so it became like a novelty. People, everybody wanted one and wanted number one. So number two, everybody was a little bit slow at first, like okay, this is serious, like he's really, and I am, you know, it's about the craft, and my storyline is. Uh, if anybody knows anything about my music, it is as deep as I approach uh, my music. And you know, they say you do everything, anything how you do everything, or vice versa. So uh, yeah, man, I'm really happy with it. Um, I got some over there at the Trill merch booth. We got number one, number two, and number three. There's gonna be a nine series of them. Um, I got Funko Pops, which is crazy. We got an action figure that we're working on. Um, so yeah, man, it all works. and. Uh, it's just we're moving into a space where it just needs to be a little bit more value. It needs to be more value for the consumer and it needs to be more value. And, and we're not just, there's nothing wrong with being poets and lyricists, um, but there's other dimensions to us. Like, you know, for me, my Star Wars figures as a kid was everything. Like, even when I had a, if I had like a, I remember I had to do a project and it was like the assassination of uh, Abe Lincoln, right? I used the Star Wars figures inside of a shoebox and did the whole murder, right? I played it all out. And of course, you know, I'm from an urban space and people are like, yeah, you got them, them Star Wars shits? Yeah, or this is real shit. I started out real young, like 
when No Complex came out, when my first album came out, I was still in my teens. Like, I was literally still wearing Incredible Hulk underoos and on tour, and I had, on tour, I still had my action figures and all of that shit, so, not to be repetitive what my brother Kwame said, but this is really and truthfully like a lifelong dream uh, uh, achieved for me to see myself on banners and be at the Comic Cons and, and actually creating a new stream of revenue and fan base till there's some people that are like, oh, the dude Gino with the comic books raps too? You know, so. Let's go. I'm not going to take too much time. I want to, you know, thank everybody there. And thank you, Destroy. And again, I apologize for being late, but I had to come from far, right? I love y'all. Gino XL. Uh, Kwame, what people could look forward to, everybody down the line, you know, give like social medias if anybody's gonna have their phone out or not, but just, you know, lead the people. So, um, what you can look forward to, besides, I don't wanna be about me, but um, myself and some very talented people in the toy industry, we just launched a new company called LBO, a toy company, um, and it's a, with, we're serious, serious business. Our first, if anybody who understands the action figure space, the first action figure that we have coming uh, quarter two next year is Captain Action. We have relaunched Captain Action figures, so we're gonna have those Captain Action figures. So if you go to Comic-Con and all that kind of stuff, you're gonna see that. We also have Universal Monsters, and we're gonna do um, a special special thing with Universal Monsters um, that, that no one has done yet. So I'm uh, looking very forward to that. You can follow me on Instagram at Kwame Vision. Um, I do a thing, and I need your help for this, and I'm gonna be real self-indulgent right now. I need your help. Wow, I do a thing every wow. Tuesday called Toy Tuesday. And every Tuesday I try to showcase a dope toy that I find, and, um, and I try to just show it in a cool way. And the tagline is, you know what time it is, and I say, it's Toy Tuesday. But since I have a crowd in front of me, I'm gonna record it, and I'm gonna say, you know what time it is, and I need all of y'all to say, it's Toy Tuesday, all right? Y'all got me? You know what time it is. It's Toy Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah! <laughs> all right, everybody, I'll teach you guys about not signing release forms, and then we can. <laughs> Key unique. Uh, the, one of the things that's planned for next year is that it's the 20th anniversary of my first solo album, Vengeance is Mine, so I was talking to Delicious Peter about doing a Vengeance is Mine action figure with the card that takes from the album cover and the figure obviously being me. And it's also the 25th anniversary of the first Arsonist album, and I know we're planning, we're planning, we're planning some sort of something. Maybe we'll put a lock of Destroy's hair in packaging and with a nice card. But we have some things planned for that as well, and probably see more and more of just pe myself and people in my circle diving more into the, you know action figures and possibly comic books. We'll see how things turn out. Thank, Thank you. you. March, hurry up! <laughs> 2024 uh, mark will mark the 25th anniversary of Simon Says and Internal Affairs album. Thank you. Currently working on a follow-up to that album called External Affairs, which I'm in the studio working on now. And a big reason why I'm here, why I'm here, to look at physical product to go along with that album. I'm working on a short film to go along with that album and things of that nature. So 2024, External Affairs. I love it. First. Yo, um, I'm putting out my last album in 2024. Um, leading up to that, I've been doing a podcast called The Best Rapper in LA Podcast because I am the best rapper in Los Angeles, period. Um, so you can tune into the podcast. It'll lead up to later on this year when I put out my last album because I have to find another stream of income to support my four children, buy Dodgers tickets, which have obviously gone up on price. Um, fuck the angels. Uh, and... Yeah. And, yeah, to support... Paying for Dodger tickets and Super 7 toys, um, I'm gonna do something else. So, uh, last album coming this year, Love and Rockets 316, and uh, maybe I'll take Destroy's job at uh, Sirius XM. Yeah. And you can get back to rapping. Oh, yeah. Not bad. 
Chino XL, what are we seeing uh, coming up? Um, I got the album with Mad Lib dropping in April. Yeah. Uh, it's actually produced by bro both uh, Jackson brothers. Half Oh No, half Mad Lib. It's 805 thing. It's called The Witch's, ha the Witch's Hammer. Um, I got an album call coming out called, uh, this is coming out in January. It's called Darkness and Other Colors, produced by Body Bag Men. And I currently have the album out, uh, God's Carpenter, which is fire, fire. Um, so we're gonna proceed. I have uh, three more comic book releases this year. Uh, we also have a thing for you guys that are real comic book nerds called The Ash Can. The Ash Can has a breakdown of all of the characters, even, even some of the characters that, that haven't been uh, introduced to the actual storyline uh, yet. Um, I got, over there we got the, Matt made the little, uh, the joints with the crates. Whatever, I wanna thank Chuck for bringing me out too. Um, what else do I have? All kinds of merch, man. We got the action figure coming out. Um, we already have the Funko Pop uh, rocking. I feel like I'm missing some other show. Oh yeah, I got an album with cannabis coming out in May. Uh, yeah, it's uh, kind of crazy, right? Like, yeah, I did all my parts. They're ridiculous. There you There's go. no words left. Um, so basically, that in raising my little girl right here, lyric, you know, it's always a job. Let's go. And that's it, man. And just uh, being happy to be. Oh yeah, my first album here to save you all is gonna be 27 years old, April 9th. It's kind of crazy, kind of crazy. So we're gonna do a new release. Uh, that with Rick Rubin uh, doing some commentary about things that we did when we made it. And uh, just be happy to be part of this culture that has given me so much. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, please, as you guys are walking out, make sure we take advantage of these homies' presence being here and hip hop being alive and well and having a pl platform here at Designer Con. Once again, I want to give a salute to my guy, Jay Period, uh, Ma Dukes, right there, the authorities outside waiting to get her, so make sure you and Farrah Monch are out of here. And anybody who made noise when uh, Chino Excel said he was Puerto Rican, they're getting arrested too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Guys, let's get a photo together, and as you see these gentlemen, you know, show some love to them. Salute to Trill, yeah, we'll salute be at the to Trill booth. Con. I got an action figure at the Trill booth. Yep. With, with he yeah, does, he really does. So you guys can so support that as well. Salute Super 7, uh, Alex MDC. DJ and there's going to be more panels as well. And my good friend, DJ Amen, come up here as well because this was brought to together by you as well. So come on up. There you go. Come on.